but Bill brought in, he, he, he approaches me with this tray of brownies. And I thought, wow, Bill really missed me while I was out. And then I look, and one of the brownies is missing. <laughs> And uh, Bill, so I got hungry on my walk in from my Tesla <laughs> to the radio station front door here. So uh, and, and then, John, as we kept talking to Bill, we found out more and more about these brownies. And it turns out that I wasn't exactly that high up on the list for these. Nobody else wanted them. It's <laughs> no, not exactly. That's, Bill, Bill was at a, uh, a gathering in no. which there was a lot of food out yeah. there. Yeah. And at the end, uh, nobody ate the brownies. So Bill yeah. took them. He took them home, and Bonnie said, "Bill, you're not allowed to eat all those brownies. Well, uh, so the, so give them to somebody else." The story is mostly correct, but not totally correct. <laughs> mostly we, correct. We we uh, we had a group of the Institute Board of Advisors, Stubblefield Institute Board of Advisors, over yesterday for a picnic, and we had a great time uh, down by the river. Uh, and uh, so some of the food was left. In fact, quite a bit of food was left, and the brownies included. And and uh, Bonnie said, "Why don't you take them in tomorrow morning for uh, Rob and John?" And I said why <laughs> and then she was pretty insistent why? that uh, you folks are uh, uh could deserve some love and uh and that's why i took that one brownie out to be sure it was lovable <laughs> and it was i think so you took the one, the, I took <laughs> one brownie out bill because you've got a sweet tooth i do have a sweet yeah. tooth yeah but anyway forget about the fact one's missing uh, rob <laughs> <laughs> forget about the fact there was a label pulled off of where it came from Martin's. Forget about all that. Yeah. Just think of the gesture of something being nice done for you and it, John. It's the it, thought, that's that's it's a, a thought that counts, John. It is a thought that counts. Yeah. The thing that nobody else wants. <laughs> Give it to <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Give it to Rob. It's, it's nothing but altruism. It's, it's, it's Rob or the trash. Yeah. So it's, that's, I'm, not, I'm that's I, not the way to frame it. It's nice to rank above trash. <laughs> yeah, come on. John, we've uh, Rob's been gone for the last two weeks, probably getting some psychological recovery, which he needs and we need. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we got to be, yeah, we got to be kind to Rob huh? today. And so the brownies was one way to do it. Don't cast it in dispersion. That it's a, it's an evil thing. It's not, it's not, nice. it's, it's, it's not evil. It's, it's not. They're brownies. There's peace in brownies. <laughs> As my friend Financial <laughs> Phil would say, don't lick a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> Come on in, Phil. <laughs> hey, Phil, I ran that opening on Friday. Did you hear it? No, I didn't. And. I knew that was going to hang on to me for a while. I'm, going to, I'm never going to live that down. And I was told by my oldest daughter, she said, Dad, I've told you that before. And I said, well, it is what it is. You know where I'm from. I can't remember it. So, But I would agree with everyone else that it is the thought that counts. However, the thought is that if nobody else wants it, Rob will eat it. <laughs> 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 He was Mikey in a former life. I guess. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, Mikey. He come on, it. come on, Phil. I try to do something nice for Rob yeah. and nice. John. Yeah, and what do I get? I get grief. So I will bring what it, it was nice. It's a, before you came in and saw him, Rob crossed your mind. Rob and John crossed your mind early in the morning, and that and that you, you should be yeah. commended for that. Yeah. Yeah. In all I, fairness, I, it sounds to me across. Bonnie's, Bonnie's mind. mind. No, going to, <laughs> and, uh, and and fortunately, but someone from the stubble field. Yeah, that's right. And Phil, unfortunately, you're right. They did cross my mind. <laughs> unfortunately, the <laughs> opposite word. All I know I have is, to admit, you know, because I haven't had Rob, and he, he was gone for a few weeks, and I was gone for a week, and, and it did cross my mind last night that I, I I get to talk to Rob. There's been something missing. I haven't been abused. I have I, everything <laughs> came back in order this morning. I'm excited. I'm pumped up. And I did think I was like, man, I get robbed. Last week I was nothing against Spencer, but I come back from Chicago. I told her I was like, oh, I haven't talked to Rob in a while. I wonder what's going on with him. And then when someone else answered the phone at 6:30, I was I was a little bit nothing against Spencer. I like Spencer, but I was a little bit deflated. I miss my boy Rob. <laughs> You know, Bill, I, I got that same bromance feeling toward you, my brother. <laughs> y'all, y'all need a moment. And before long, before long, we're going to have severe disagreements about why the Steelers stink, and that's that's when it really gets good. You don't think? Like, well, I'll, I'll think I'll think they stink for one reason, and you'll think they stink for another reason. I don't think we're going to stink this year. I mean, plus, you're the eternal optimist. I don't either. When it comes to the Steelers, you're the 19, eternal optimist. 
nineteen to sixteen. There's my prediction for every game this year. That's just like that. <laughs> win 1916. 1916. I think training camps, this is July 17th, so training camp starts pretty soon. I'm not sure what day, but it's coming up real quick. And Phil. I, I would encourage anyone that's back in Latrobe, if you've never gone, it is it is a good time. You should go. Yeah. You say 1916 for this year's prediction, uh, Phil, that was last year's predictions. That was year before yes. last prediction. That was year before yes. before last prediction. You're, uh, yes. I get the impression you're kind of stuck in a rut there. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but that's that's the stiller way. They're, I think they're going to have a grinded out. I expect big things from Najee Harris and big things from that defense. So with, with that, the combination of that, nineteen to sixteen will be a good score. You know, uh, by the way, uh, Phil, um, while I was gone, uh, we had some pretty good gains with the markets. I mean, uh, there were some yes, days we where we were racing north. Some of that sold off a little bit last week because of one of those good news is bad news scenarios, but. Uh, by and large, things have been pretty good. Yeah, and the week before last, actually, when we got a really good job report, and that Friday it was good news is bad news because the jobs report looked pretty good. And, you know, remember we talked about this sticky inflation, and some part of that is the labor market. However, when the CPI didn't agree with the jobs market because inflation fell further than what we expected. So now we start to really – play in our minds like hey can we have a soft landing that is to decrease inflation down to the target and like john said i still think at some point that that two percent target is going to have to be changed if we maintain a healthy labor market but what you see with this in and it, it starts to come to the forefront remember last year we had talked about man wages wages are up this amount and wages are up this much and it's contributing to some of this inflation well wages are still up and the increase in wages have slowed some, but wages are still up, and you start to get real wage growth, and meaning what, what I'm making opposed to what everything else cost us. So that, that CPI and PPI report last week was extremely encouraging, and now that it could be good news is good news again on the labor front if inflation continues to fall closer down to that target. Now, if it goes up the same path as been going, heck, we'll be there at the next CPI report or are awfully close. I wouldn't anticipate, of course, as we get closer to that target, that we'll have these big decreases like we've had so far this year. But if it continues to fall, remember the Fed data-driven, if it continues to fall, that's a signal that they, they could stop the rate increases sooner rather than later. Ford has announced they're cutting prices on their electric F-150 Lightning pickups by about 10000 bucks. Ford stock is down eight-tenths of a percent this morning at $14.85. Tesla stock has been flirting with $300 again over the last month, Phil. Ford sells way more vehicles than Tesla, yet Ford stock is still under 15 bucks. Can you explain? Not really, other than the perception of what Tesla is going to be in and this is, an, uh, this is a small example, but while I was in Chicago, I was amazed at how mainstream Teslas were. And I, I couldn't get over, you know, with all, we didn't rent a car. We did Lyft or Uber everywhere we went. And that's a lot of Lyft and Uber rides that we had taken while we were there. And I would say more than half were Teslas. And, you know, of course it makes sense if you're a Lyft or Uber driver, and you're, you don't have to pay for gas with Tesla. But it also said to me that this is becoming more mainstream. It's not just a person here or a person there that is purchasing these cars. It's other, you know, it, it's everyone, Lyft and Uber drivers, that can afford and are willing to purchase these Teslas. So it really did open my mind to, you know, because I'd always said that Tesla, I mean, it's a pure growth stock. You'll never find it in a value mutual fund or an underpriced uh, uh, mutual uh, company mutual fund where we say, hey, we're just going to buy things on the dip. You're never going to see that because intrinsic value-wise, it, it, it's overpriced. However, the perception is, and I'm starting to see that come to play, is that Tesla is, is going to be one of the big boys as far as sales in the United States and across the world. You know, GM, Ford, Toyota, Honda, all those other players where Tesla has it's wiggled its way in there and it's on the forefront of this technology. And I was just, I was shocked at, at how many Teslas I was, I was in when we were going five miles down the street, and I was getting picked up by a Tesla and paying them ten bucks. 
Phil, uh, Bill, do you want to correct Phil on how to pronounce that car name? Absolutely I? not. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tesla. Tesla. There's an R at the end of that car. Go ahead, Phil. You, you, got, you got you got the podium, Phil. It. Yeah, I was I was fascinated though by you know and and it drives my family crazy, but I, I get in there and I'm I'm fascinated by the business model of Lyft and Uber drivers, but also. The, the the Tesla and I want to talk to them and I want to ask them like you know what made you buy a Tesla did you buy this just for your business with Lyft and Uber and do you do this part time or full I want to know all those things however most of them didn't either they didn't speak English or they didn't want to answer my stupid question so they pretended like they didn't speak English that was what my family <laughs> said they, they they spoke English now they just didn't want to answer your dumb questions I was really fascinated by that. And, you know, how that fit into their individual, that small business model, that's what they are, but how, how a Tesla fit into that small business model. But I would say that the Tesla drivers, they did seem as if that were their business. You didn't have child's toys in there that had chargers in the back. If you needed to charge your phone, one had water. All of their vehicles were extremely clean, and that told me that that was their business. But, you know, that's beside the point. That to me, it was the mainstream use of Teslas in the bigger cities. You know, we don't say it that much around here because it's a little bit more difficult to charge them, but in the bigger cities, you, you have no issue with charging uh, a Tesla. And how many of those I saw, I was, I was fascinated. But let me pick up on that point about not seeing many here, Phil. Certainly not like you saw in Chicago, uh, but I'm seeing more and more on the road. It used to be I, I, I could go for a couple of weeks without seeing a Tesla. Now I generally see one at least once a day driving. Oh, they're yeah, all, I, I they're follow all the one place. home most yeah. days. Mm -hmm. you, you see those now when you're in population centers as much yeah. as you see yeah. anything else. Yeah. It used mm -hmm. to be an anomaly, Bill. You're right. Yeah. Uh, Phil, let's talk about the Fed and, and the futures of uh, rate increases and at what point uh, you think this stops because uh, the latest reports show that uh, it may not be necessary to continue raising interest rates. Uh, and that's going to be dependent upon what the Federal Reserve is more afraid of. And I still think that they're more afraid of inflation coming back and, and getting up to those uncomfortable levels again than they are about going too far. And we have to remember the repair for each. What is the repair if we increase rates too much? Well, the repair is decreasing rates. That's pretty, that's pretty simple to do. They've done it multiple times. It just in this COVID area, the era, they've done it multiple times. However, Fixing the problem where we didn't go far enough takes more time, just like we're seeing right now. This started back in probably January, February of last year, where it's like, boy, this isn't transitory. We've really got to start doing something with these rates. And it's been a long and painful road, you know, 16, 17 months, where our markets, and we still haven't recovered where we were at the end of or beginning of 2022. We're still not back there. We're getting close, but we're not back there. So the repair of we went too far is easier than it is that we didn't go far enough. So I still think that there's one, possibly two, regardless of what the CPI, and unless it hits the target, which I doubt will happen at the next reading. But unless we hit the target, I still think that they're going to do one, probably two more, maybe one, another pause, and let us see how it comes. If we don't get to that target by the fall, then they do it again. That would be my guess. Your your sales signals get a little shady there, Phil. Not sure if you move someplace uh -oh. up there. Yeah, so I did not. I'm yeah. sorry. I said something really brilliant. You did. We 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 got it. <laughs> I'm not sure we did. What we was got the, the brilliant part? We, we got the volume. Yeah, we're missing the brilliant part. But go ahead. <laughs> you missed that part. You, you're solid now, though. That's for sure. Uh, so. Uh, in regards, to, let's let's say the, uh, the the Fed does another quarter percent rate hike, and you're an investor in the stock market, and you're looking at that, and you say, okay, I'm still okay with this because they're close to the end, and there's only a quarter point. Or are you like, you know, this is going to create uh, you know economic damage, a recession, and uh, they're they've gone no. too far I'm out. Which what's the reaction? No, uh, the, the first, uh, and it's just a quarter of a point, and it's expected. We're still pricing in at least one more rate hike. When you look at the probability, I think it's CME, if you want to look that up, that does the probability. There's still a high probability that they do at the next meeting that they do a rate increase, and our markets still reflect that. So we would think that that's baked into the market because of that high probability. However, we are looking – remember, markets look six months out, three to six months out. So the thought is – 
if we, we continue to go at this pace that we're going, and they'll hold rates there for a little bit, and before long, now we have a reduction that could possibly be closer, uh, a rate reduction closer than what it was before, just simply based off the pace of inflation right now. And, you know, that, that, that CPI number at 3%, that was kind of a shock, and that, that was what led this really good week that we had last week. Today it looks like we're, getting, we're taking a little step back before massive earnings come in. We have a lot of companies, Tesla being one of them, that, that are going to report this week and the fear of the bank. Remember early in the year we had all these fears of the bank and is our banking system going to fail? Now we have some banks that's going to get more banks that's going to report, I should say, more banks that's going to report. So will we see weakness in our financial system or further weakness in our financial system or can we put that behind us? That's probably why we're stepping back a little bit today. Now some of the banks reported at the end of last week and they were all yeah. better than a projected earnings. So that would be an indicator you're going to get good reports from the other banks this week. Uh, it would be, but it's mixed results because they've got credit cards, and what our fear was were the smaller banks. So when you look at the J.P. Morgans and the city banks and their credit card business, it kind of lifted them up so that the, the bottom line may not tell the whole story. So as the rest of the banks come in, some that may not be as heavy on the credit side, that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for the banking picture, avoid the credit, the credit card uh, profits that they had made. You know, I think financial news is driven by fear. We're afraid of this. We're afraid of that. You know, that's if it leads, it bleeds. You know, if it, it, if uh, we make people, it, everybody is always nervous about the economy. And along those lines, the Wall Street Journal front page above the fold, the Chinese economy is beginning to sag, and people are predicting that it's going to be a drag on the global economy. How does that affect us? Yeah, and by the way, well, this morning, Phil, the Shanghai closed down uh, 0.87%, so nearly nine tenths percent uh, on the downside. Go ahead. You can you can look at it from two different ways. So a slowdown in consumers in China could result in a little bit of disinflation. That could be a disinflationary move. But on the other hand, does it lead us to think maybe we'll follow suit and show some economic weakness as well, and then put us into a recession? And we continually remind people of this, and, and I don't want to make it sound as if on the street we don't care about a recession, but in with their blinders on looking simply at stock market performance, we don't care about a recession. And the reason for that is, is the whole anatomy of a recession. Once it's declared, they go back and give it a start date, and, and that basically says we're almost to the, at the end of, of this current recession. But because of the strong labor market, that's why that hasn't happened. But if they said, for example, hey, today we're in a recession, we're declaring a recession, they go back and give it a start date. So we've been there for quite some time, and that's how that's announced. And normally we're near the end of that recession. So from the time it's declared to the end of a recession, our markets really do well. The whole breadth of the recession is where our markets do poorly. But you have to remember that they go back and give it a start date. So the impact on our markets, it would be a short-term drag, but overall, you know, it tells us that we're at the bottom of the economic cycle and the next thing is expansion. So there's not a whole lot of concern from our standpoint looking at stock market performance. Now, of course, we don't want that on the street, but with blinders on, which we tend to live from nine to, nine to four anyway, with blinders on, we don't really care that much. Phil, let me throw a ringer in, a difference altogether. Uh, the heat wave that the world is experiencing now, is that going to be reflected or manifest the market anyway? It could on the energy sector, in, in a lot of ways on the energy sector. One, the consumption of energy, and think back to, and I don't remember how long ago it was, where the, the systems in Texas, I think it was, couldn't keep up in cool homes, and it caused a lot of problems. Well, get one, the consumption of energy, that's, uh, that's demand, right, and how much supply is there. So it could increase costs, and it could, be a, a, it could be a headwind for inflation and cause inflation to tick up even, even if it's brief. So it could have an impact, especially on that sector. And from an from a overall standpoint, it could be a headwind 
to this battle that we're still fighting against inflation. Yeah, I was thinking about the other sector besides energy. And I have good friends in the Southwest and talk to them occasionally. And they're basically staying inside. They're not going to be competing with the, uh, with the heat. So a lot of their, what they'd be doing for shopping, uh, they're, they're cutting back on. So uh, that's just an example. But I suspect uh, worldwide there are numerous other people doing, taking the same approach. Yeah, I'm sure that, that that's that's why I always use minute examples because it's typically not minute. Like I've talked about Teslas in Chicago, that's typically my, yeah. not minute. So you know, to to broaden that, could it have some impact on overall travel, or do we just travel somewhere else where the conditions are a bit more pleasant? And yeah. my wife and daughter just came back from Texas, and they were talking about how incredibly hot yeah. that it, that it was, even though without the humidity, it was just unbelievably hot. When they got there one evening at 10 o'clock, it was still pushing 100 degrees, and they just couldn't believe how hot it was. And like like you just said, they didn't want to go out either. It was just yeah. too much. Bill, let's talk about uh, food prices. The uh, Black Sea grain deal with Russia is now dissolved. Putin's out and uh, of uh, that agreement, and that's going to uh, jack up food prices, wheat prices are already up around the globe and let's uh let's discuss what that's going to do in regards to inflation and what some reaction might be to that uh and again it's another thing like energy where it could be a small sector the overall food prices have dropped a great great deal here so far this year and depending on how long that lasts and exactly what it does but that is another inflationary pressure. And I, I don't know that it's enough for the Federal Reserve to look at this and say, hey, we have to keep cutting rates because grain's going to be more expensive. But it, it could be something that would play into the overall rate story that we're going to see for the rest of this year. All right, man. By the way, uh, you alluded to the fact that you do call each morning at 638. Phil does two minutes live at 638. We replay it. At 7.38, and if you're missing those two minutes of brilliance each morning, I suggest that you start to check that out because Phil is at his level best at that hour of the day. It's right around workout time, so the blood's flowing. I am incredibly no annoying in the morning. So incredibly. I wake up, and I'm just bouncing off the walls right off the bat. So if you want annoyed first thing in the morning, I'm your guy because I'm ready to go when I when I, my head leaves that pillow. Phil, I, I don't think that's the proper way to promote that segment. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me at six thirty eight. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a little jolt. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> Powerball today is worth nine hundred million dollars. If you don't hit that, uh, you got a chance for mega millions tomorrow at six hundred and forty million dollars. Uh, let's say you hit the nine hundred million, Phil, and you call Phil McCoy. What advice are you giving people? I'm going to, we're going to close our office and <laughs> lay out some cookies, maybe some brownies for Martins. We'll do a lot of good things. Don't ask Bill. Here. Don't ask Bill to bring <laughs> the brownies. If you're looking to impress your clients, don't ask Bill to bring the brownies. There's only one missing. <laughs> but, but you most certainly need to call 304-263-4343. The second that you find out you win that. Bill, Bill's the kind of guy I get the feeling he calls you and goes, Rob, I want, I want to come over and see him. I'm going to bring a six-pack. And he gets there, yeah. and there's three of them left and half a pack of barbecued <laughs> chips. Well, you didn't plan on drinking the whole six-pack, though. I mean, you have to get – he's allowed to have a brownie if he brings them. I, I the think – The timing in which he eats the brownie, is, it, it doesn't matter. The, the timing matters tremendously, Phil. When you bring – Wait, listen, you you ever go to dinner at somebody's house and your wife says, let's bring a bottle of wine? You don't walk in the door with the cork out. You're sucking down a couple of <laughs> chugs of it, and then you hand it to the guest, the host and go, here you go, That's here's some a, wine. You don't do that, do you? I have exactly friends that do that. that. <laughs> That's not exactly apples to apples, though. If it's the same out, thing. Stick, okay. by your, <laughs> stick by your guns, Phil. Don't let this guy in. <laughs> it is the exact same thing. Hey, if I were afraid the guy that I was bringing the wine to would drink the entire bottle, maybe I would have a sip before I brought it in. So that's more in, <laughs> that's an indicator that he thought you were going to eat the whole pan. Well, I'm telling you, you you go to somebody's house and you're bringing food or or drink, and it's already open when you're giving it to them, and something's missing. <laughs> um, 
hey, I, I'm not Heloise or Ann Landers or any, anybody who gives advice for a living, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to root against that one. I'll nope. like a sandwich with a bite out of yeah. it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, hey, I got you some. Yeah, no, no, no. Note to the gift horse in the mouth again. Yeah. Bring you brownies, and the only thing you got to walk away with is what well, he ate one of them yeah. on the way in. Yeah. If you won the lottery, you'd complain about the tax. Yeah, I would. Yeah. N- note to my wife send anything to Rob, it has been a pristine, unopened <laughs> condition. <laughs> or you catch grief. She, she did. She, she did. <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's true. Uh, she, she did initially. Thank you, Bonnie. Bill didn't quite carry out the execution. <laughs> Bill, how do we reach you for more information? I have one. You can reach us at, at 304-263-4343 or stop by and see us with an appointment at 1270 Winchester Avenue. Right here, Martin. Thank you, Philip. Have a great day, sir. Glad you're back, sir. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Nine o'clock.